Salini. Uh, very good afternoon to one and all. So respected uh, dignitaries, please switch on your videos. And uh, after a while, when, when everyone is ready, Salini, you can start the opening session. Salami, you can start the session. Esteemed President, Vice Chancellor, Honorable Panel Members, and Guests of Honor, Delegates, Invited Guests, Members of Faculty and Staff, Coordinators of the Symposium, and my student colleagues, a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to all of you to the plenary session of the National Virtual Management Symposium, Mark Logistics, with the theme, Winning the Market and Reaching the Door. Re-strategizing business. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sunil Kumar Das Bindi, Assistant Professor, ASBM University, will moderate this session. I now take the privilege of introducing the panel members of this session. Sri Paritosh Ponder is currently working as Manager Supply Chain, Tata Projects, Mumbai. He has done his MBA from ASBM University and one of our alumni. In the career spanning of 13 years, he has worked in many companies, Deputy Manager Procurement at ILNFS, Engineering and Construction Company Limited, Deputy Manager, Supply Chain Management, Startup Project, Procurement Manager, ACOM, and now as a Senior Supply Chain, Startup Project. We thank you, sir, for agreeing to be with us in this symposium. Thank Shri Arvind Sundar is currently working as Director, 9th Week. He is a business leader, consulting stakeholders who work for long-term profit-making results. His key competences are B2B or B2C, digital transformation. We are thankful to you, sir, for your gracious presence. Thank you, Shani. Sri Niranjan Prabhu is currently working as Head of Operations at Gati Intellect Systems Limited, Hyderabad. He has done his BCom from University of Pune and MBA from Manipal Institute of Management. In the career spanning of 14 years, he had worked in different companies with different roles. He had worked as senior manager, KSSPL, new academic programs and collaboration, and now head of operations at Gati Intellect Systems Limited. We are grateful to you, sir, for your gracious presence. Thank you for the opportunity. The moderator, Dr. Sunil Kumar Das Bindi, to deliver the opening remarks and then moderate the session. Sir, please. Thank you, Shalini. Uh, first of all, I welcome all of our uh, respected uh, dignitaries, panel members in this smart logistic. And due to so uh, technical problems, two of our, two of our uh, uh, panel members have not joined. One of the member was Raj Banerjee sir was trying. There is some technical glitch in their network in their area, so he can join us. And due to some unavoidable circumstances, uh, one of our uh, panel member guest. Pramod sir was not able to join today. So we'll go ahead with uh, our rest three panel members with our discussion. So once again, I welcome you all to our National Visual Management Symposium on the Mark Logistic on the theme winning the market and reaching the doors, restrategizing business. So the opening uh, remarks of the theme were businesses are compelled to either adapt to change or become victim. There would be a significant effect on business because of technological trends, evolving consumer tastes, and shifting consumer landscape. So the coronavirus pandemic has triggered a period of huge and unprecedented change within the marketing and logistics sector. One critical feature for any commercial sector is to find buyers. The more rewarding markets are compensated not on their absolute results, but their performance compared to their rivals. That is why it is so important to cautiously plan the market basis strategy and implement the solutions best suited to bring warm, ready to convert leads to the door. So before one can take one's business to the next level, new customers should be reached. To expand sale, 
one must to, needs to understand what the target market is what value propositions one have to offer and where the gaps in the strategy exist a company's business strategy plan helps to accomplish its vision prioritizing goals and winning against its rivals while maximizing financial results so it is open to our panel members we'll see how logistic and marketing can be great corporate functions that are critical for our competitive positions of an organization so with this i would like to request uh, arvind sundar sir to please say his views in this occasion on the theme of mark logist sir please <coughs> Thank you for uh, giving me this chance. Uh, I'll probably use a, a, a you know a PowerPoint deck to yes, uh, 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 share my thoughts, and that that would probably make things easy for everybody also to follow my point because I literally see myself as an outsider for this industry, uh, but uh, should be able to make a connect with what I have uh, to show. So let me just quickly share my screen. I I hope you can see it. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, great. So nine uh, nine pinks is a, a marketing service provider. Now, uh, before I get into a lot of details, let me warm up to the entire industry as what I understand and what I know it. Uh, uh, the entire logistics industry is looked at as a two hundred and fifteen billion dollar for forecasted market, uh, which means that it's almost about. Uh, uh of this almost about 10 to 15% is only the organized sector uh, again these are old stats uh, uh i i i'm sure there will be better information with you all but this is what i understand now in terms of the in, uh, in industry itself it has been given the state of self infrastructure which means that's a huge advantage for the logistics market uh, uh manufacturing is expected to be about 25 to 30% of the gdp but again with the government's call of atmanirbhar and uh, make in india this i'm sure would be a lot better than uh, 30% of gdp because a lot more happening in india means a, a bigger number uh, the C cagr uh, growth is on uh, stated at around 10.5% now while all these stats are good the main growth driver which the industry is seeing is the e-commerce segment now that's where i start coming into the picture for uh, the logistics market e-commerce uh, is going to uh, make a huge difference we have seen uh, um, uh, with companies like amazon flipkart and uh, tons of companies that have come into uh, the market with who offer e-commerce solutions uh, freight is uh, online freight platforms are going to increase uh, that's mainly to ensure uh, lower entry barriers and less capital investments are made now these two points actually make a business case for me because uh, Uh, if you look at the government emphasis, uh, this is the, the, this uh, particular slide that you're seeing is as per the freight report of uh, freight report by the government. Uh, a entire section is dedicated to technological advancements uh, that are required to ensure uh, logistics becomes a, a lot improved. Uh, now this uh, the. the entire uh, you know the, the dynamics start changing uh, 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 for the infrastructure industry uh, over here when we see this that the uh, logistic performance indicator uh, has actually helped uh, shows india in a much better situation uh, we, we have improved to 36 from 54 globally 
Uh, of course, in 2018, we see a slip uh, to uh, an NLPI of 44. Uh, now, while it might be a bad number, this actually shows that there's a huge scope of improvement uh, over there. Uh, uh, while the whole global scenario is fast changing, uh, it gives us an advantage to uh, uh, start getting more uh, uh, competitive across the global situation. Uh, there are many areas of improvements for this LPI to uh, become better. Uh, for example, uh, improving the quality of roads, rails, uh, uh, ports, etc. The major thing, again, again, uh, coming back to my story, is the digitalization and the technological advancements. Now, that's a half-baked story. Uh, if if I have to start getting into deeper into it, I'll I'll tell you the rest of the story by walking you through my experiences and uh, uh, you know associations with the industry. Uh, uh, here is what I like little uh, uh, amount of discussion. I want to know if anybody knows what this particular uh, thing is that I'm showing. You, can anybody tell me what is this? Okay, I, I hello. Yes, sir. Nine pins. Can you hear uh, me? Oh, right now it is on. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. I thought I was not audible. So just check, checking, uh, you know, uh, can anybody connect anything to this particular image that I'm showing? Looks like a, a, a girl's statue. But again, uh, you know, as I told in one of the previous slides, that these are the half-baked stories that we are looking at. Now, if you start looking at it in a full picture, this is about uh, a, a bronze statue that has been installed in, uh, in uh, New York Wall Street. Uh, the main story about this particular uh, you know, statue is about raising awareness uh, about the gender diversity and size in the corporate leadership. You know, it's no more about how small your company is or how small you are but there's a huge uh, opportunity and this is what this particular girl's statue uh, shows it, it might be a small one but it has a massive impact in terms of how you perceive the complete story because when you see just as this one it doesn't really talk about anything except that it's a small girl yeah that's it right now if i go to this particular image i don't know if anybody can actually make out what this is uh, again, uh, you know, it looks like a person doing a shopping and coming out of uh, a, a probably a supermarket or a shopping mall. Uh, but when I start telling you the full story about it, it's a complete different situation. This, this guy is called the Tank Man uh, and nobody knows his real name, nothing, but the image itself speaks a lot than what this speaks about. So it's important that we all try to understand what is the full picture about the uh, about what we are doing in, in the logistics market or any market for that matter. But since we are talking about logistics, it's very important we get into this. Now, getting into what uh, uh, my experiences have been, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've uh, been associated with the logistics market quite some time back as I had my own venture called easymoving.in uh, in the year 2006-2007. I worked for a couple of years, but quite a lot of challenges. It was in the space of demo domestic relocations. Now, uh, domestic relocations is again related to the migrations that uh, uh, people do from one place to the other place, interstate or intrastate. It's a 
very unorganized sector completely you, you know uh, probably about 10 to 15 percent again is an organized sector but the rest is very unorganized over here uh, the size of this market is almost about 2000 crores which means almost every year 2000 crores worth of transactions happen in this logistics market in this domestic relocations migrations are uh, 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 numbered it again it's a very old news uh, as per 2011 uh, uh, about 453.6 million people migrate every year this could be from the blue collared uh, migrations or uh, the lower level migrations but there's a huge amount of movement that's happening now reasons that have been listed as per the census data are uh, due to work or employment, business, education, marriage, uh, moving after the birth, mood with households. Now, one thing that would capture our imagination is that almost 66% constitute women owing to marriage uh, uh, who, uh, you know, uh, migrate. This is a, uh, th these are some of the issues or pointers that tell us why technology has to start getting into uh, ensuring uh, logistics gets much better improved pardon right. sir sir are you changing the slides uh, or yeah i am are you not yes. able to see yeah now right now we can we are able to see sir oh, okay. okay i'm sorry thank you thank you sir. All please right. continue sir. so um, that was the uh, my earliest experience in 2006-2007 of being in the logistics market. What is happening now is I, I founded my company, Nine Pinks Marketing Services. The premise has been that uh, companies have not been able to communicate well to the vast market that 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 is that is available. He, I, I'm, when I say 2,000 crore market, that's just the domestic relocations. Now you can look at the rest of the market logistics is massive so i offer marketing services to my clientele uh, what what do i do uh, we offer them brand development communication strategies uh, we help them understand how the technology has to be marketed uh, we understand the importance of data and analytics so there's a long sense of how technology can make a difference to this industry uh, with with the kind of teams that we have we carry a team of uh, creative content developers who enjoy consulting and building various forms of content now this is a very important aspect for us because every company has their own story uh, you know we, we we can go back to the many granny stories that we have heard we remember them because uh, uh, somebody has told us those stories in a very uh, easy way for us to understand. And that's where our businesses need that kind of valuable support to communicate their uh, 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 stories to their target markets. So Nine Pinks comes into that picture. We deliver content to different stakeholders. Now the stakeholders are both uh, businesses as well as their customers what kind of customers that we deal with they are talking about uh, iot uh, internet of things blockchain gaming data analytics artificial intelligence and robotics these are a lot of things happening uh, uh, improving the way uh, logistics is managed in the industry a quick case study of uh, one of my uh, customers and how we actually help them uh, uh, to uh, uh, generate bet more business uh, by simple changes on their own website. It's an IoT based form, uh, does a lot of, uh, you know, devices, uh, puts a lot of devices on uh, vehicles and uh, uh, mobile and immobile properties to ensure they track the required data. Uh, they started as a GPS based vehicle tracking system solution but as the market got saturated, they, uh, uh, you know, uh, improved their own services and products. 
and got into fleet management. Now, fleet management led to a lot more other things happening uh, in, in the system that calls in like temperature control and management, driver behavior analysis, now uh, route, route management, vehicle maintenance for that matter, fuel management. Now, what is happening is this entire data can be analyzed sitting in one corner of a room by simple clicks of buttons. They can see where the vehicle is going, how the vehicle can actually improve in terms of their route. Now, see, uh, if there is a flooding in some location, uh, an automatic route uh, uh, change can be improvised and uh, the driver can be intimated in immediately so that they can avoid vehicles being stopped, uh, ensure vehicle moves in a better uh, direction uh, to avoid accidents, to ensure the, the goods get delivered. A lot of things are possible. How did we uh, uh, make a difference for this particular company? We offered our solutions in branding. The initial branding was done by us so that the perception of a company is spoken by their brand brand itself. Uh, brand has a lot of connotations to it, like the logos, the colors, and stuff. Uh, we did uh, we offer our digital marketing consulting to them on a regular basis. The one major change that they did, which helped them to improve, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, their sales, if I can actually just put it in that way, was. We put a calculator and on their website's homepage, which helped uh, uh, fleet owners to, uh, without even talking to this customer, with uh, to, to this company, they can calculate how many uh, vehicles they have and what kind of fuel would be required. Uh, by giving those basic de uh, details, they can understand how much of saving they can do on an annual basis by just using these companies' products. Now, this is very important because it impacts a lot of uh, logistical uh, activities uh, that go into the business. Uh, keeping it short, I complete. Uh, uh, I conclude over here. Uh, uh, there's definitely a lot more things that I can speak, uh, but uh, uh, what we come into the why we come into the picture uh, uh, with our target markets is that we help them tell their story holistically because that that's a big uh, thing that they need to do uh, uh, once they tell how their product can help improve things uh, you know you you start seeing the results immediately thank you very much Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, wonderful deliberation. Sri Arvind, sir, sir uh, of nine things have uh, pointed out uh, the economy in uh, that uh, right now the 30% of GDP comes from manufacturing. And uh, Atmanirbhar is going to be playing a very big role in the next coming market. When it comes to CHR growth, we, it consists of 10.5%. Huge differences is seen right now in uh, taking the use of digitalization or internet business. The greatest players were Amazon and Flipkart. Online flight, uh, they are using online flight platforms. And uh, less capital intensive uh, schemes and businesses are in a very huge trend. There is a raising awareness about the gender uh, difference. Uh, SAR has uh, postulated through a picture showing a bronze uh, statue of a woman showing the gender diversity today and uh, how this gender diversity nowadays with uh, so much of urbanization and uh, the outcome income has been increasing disposable income is everywhere education is increasing and it will uh, lead to uh, the improvement of the markets and uh, they also postulated that uh, how nine things can play a big role in offering uh, marketing strategies brand management technical help to the organizations nowadays with digitalization during this corona covid times all has come to aware about this uh, online market and uh, which is possible today now 
and uh, sarhels also posted through a case study that uh, how customers generate more in business and how iot internet of things can play a big role so thank you very much and um, it is sure write your questions if any in your in the chat box so that we can discuss or i will take that questions to the respective uh, uh, dignitaries or panel members in the question hour session thank you sir and um, salini you, you sir. please introduce uh, uh, raj benerji sir we welcome you sir raj benerji sir uh, uh, though you have technical glitches you have joined us salini please go with the welcome address of raj benerji sir Shri Raj Banerjee is currently working as business head East Reliance Retail. He is a business leader with expertise driving profitability, scaling business growth, turning around lost making businesses, make, managing cross personal function team and expanding market share. His competence has been in devising business strategies, product brand management and leading top line growth and bottom line improvement to attain organizational objective. He was graduated from University of Calcutta with commerce stream and completed MBA with marketing specialization from IIM Bangalore. In the span of two decades, he had worked 17 years in future groups in different portfolios such as business head, small format ease, chief marketing and experience design and many others. We are grateful to you, sir, for your gracious presence. We welcome you, sir. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much. Am I audible? Oh, yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Though you have uh, so much technical problems, uh, you have joined us. Uh, so may I now request uh, Raj Benerji, sir, to share his deliberation on the theme, on the topic in, in our symposium. Um, sir, please. If you, if you can help me, sir, because I joined late, if yes. you can really help me to update a little bit on this, if I missed out something. So okay. my sincere apology, uh, during the time where technology is taking over everything and I am having technical glitches. So my sincere apology to all the panel members and to everyone who is listening to me. I'm so sorry about it, but uh, if you can just help me with a little bit, uh, you know, update about things, so then I can just narrate. Yes, sir. I yes, sir. Much. yes, sir. So, sir, uh, then uh, we will allow another panel member to yeah. start within the duration. We can, uh, I can help you in this deliberation yeah. through WhatsApp, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, so may now request our uh, respected panel member, Paritos Mandal, sir, to please uh, come with his deliberation, sir. Sir, please. Yes, sir. Is it audible, sir? Good afternoon, all. Yes, sir. Audible. And uh, to to all the participants, uh, our all students were participating in the live streaming in the conference hall, sir. Okay. So since they are physically present, so our management have taken a decision that they will sit in the conference room and see the live stream session. So the students who have any questions, they can put in the uh, and give to the coordinator so that we can have an question hour session. Sir, please, Paritos Mandal, sir. And uh, I also proud to say that Paritos Mandal, sir, is one of our alumni of ASBM University. We welcome you to your home, sir. Sir, please start your uh, Thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. And I'm extremely grateful to my respected Dr. Visaj Patnaik, sir, Alguma, and Kalyan Sankar, sir, for inviting me in this session. I am uh, really lucky to have a great mentors like you all and it has added an unforgettable and golden chapter in my life. Always uh, I respect uh, all your visionary thought, dynamic personality and selfless effort has changed me in the spirit of qualitative workmanship. Uh, that uh, the day I joined SBM, my, uh, one thing I remember till that and the Visaj uh, Patnaik sir uh, in our OB class one said, this progress one makes in a career always depends greatly on the kind of supervision he gets. And uh, from that day, I consider myself lucky to have a guru, uh, as lucky to have uh, Visaj Patnaik sir as my guru. 
and uh, now i am going to start uh, on this topic this uh, winning the market and uh, reaching the doors and restrategizing business before uh, discussing on this topic i just uh, introduce myself i am paritosh mandal and i am working as a supply chain manager regional supply chain manager in tata project limited uh, mumbai and uh, i am taking care of procurement contract management including inventory management of mumbai region for tata project limited we this tata project limited we are a contracting company here and in uh, in construction industry we construct uh, we are into buildings we are into metros we are into highways and we are into bridges and all and my responsibility here is to in supply chain management from starting from procurement to delivery to the project sites okay that uh, i would like to uh, convey to all that uh, this various uh, important aspects of an organization like quality infrastructure market uh, market research and effective logistic and supply chain process and inventory management which are crucial for any business organization to flourish in the market and logistics always creates and increases the value business the value business offer by improving market chain and ensuring the availability of product in in all organization this uh, whatever it may it is in construction it is in banking in finance sector and retail sector logistics always plays an essential part in supply chain management it is used to plan and coordinate the movement of products timely and safely and effectively any successful business leaders always acknowledge the crucial importance of effectively organized logistics that's i also believe in my current organization they always understand that implementing by implementing seamless logistics is a key element in keeping peace with customer demands and outperforming competitors and logistics is an important element of a successful supply chain that always helps increase the sales and profit of a business that deal with the production uh, we can say it in shipment warehousing and delivery product moreover a always a reliable logistic services can boost a business value and have help in maintaining a positive public image then al- already i said that any successful business leader always acknowledge the crucial importance and effectively organize logistics today just i am going to elaborate what are the benefits of logistic planning whatever we do what, whatever we do in organization there are so many departments in supply chain department it start from man, uh, manufacturing procurement inventory management warehouse management and logistics and every organization should keep focus on the importance of formulating effective logistic and supply chain strategies to stay competitive in the industry it is equally important for any business organization to develop a customer centric approach to satisfy its valued customers and what are the components uh, what are the benefits of logistics planning the good logistic planning uh, uh, in tata that we primary objective of any logistics strategy is to deliver the right product to the right customer at the right time and at the least possible cost and any effective logistic strategy can help our, any organization and help your company to minimize investment and other cost by defining the service levels at which your organization is most cost effective my voice is audible sir hello hello yes sir it is audible sir it is audible yes sir now it is in a changing environment sir this logistic planning always minimizes the risk by enable companies to anticipate change and develop strategies to adapt those changes and in supply chain management are always in a state of flux so many companies develop logistic strategy for a, for specific product line and it is well known that the role of logistics always contrib- contributing to the micro and macro levels of the economy then what are the planning tips to unify supply chain that uh, in i believe that businesses don't compete only supply chain compete and we is uh, we always maintain and expand our inventory management strategies strategy which will uh, help our uh, help to increase our profitability and uh, in, uh, uh, profitability and promote our visibility because nowadays what happened in uh, after this covid uh, in 19 uh, situation this demands in the eco e-commerce sector ever changing it is important that we increase your supply chain visibility at every corner because this uh, means that you, uh, we need to utilize tools to track production we need to track orders 
and we need to track the product shipment we need to track whether this order to get uh, is delivered to the customer or not in order to get a better idea and what might be hurting this is a unique process and what we call this, this is the logistic planning and uh, in the, because in this panel all are my seniors that uh, rajbanerji sir i i have seen you in the since 2006 i will so listen uh, your so many lecture series at our i mean at my college days and uh, today i privileged to have a seat with you in the discussion and uh, in my little experience uh, this is my experience in logistic and anything any question you can ask me then uh, i'll elaborate Thank you, sir. So I request all the participants to post your questions or give to the coordinators so that we can uh, discuss in the question hour session, sir. Uh, so Paritas Mandal, sir, have uh, told the importance of logistic, logistic companies and how can it benefit from effective planning today. And uh, effective planning is must uh, as per the presentation deliberation that we have seen. I have seen that. Any business in logistic, transport, or warehouse industries, it help companies boost their efficiency and productivity. And uh, fleet management uh, is also coming up with a very big role today. It provides uh, financial benefits. Effective logistic planning and management can secure shipping transactions against low or wasted products. It improves efficiency. Logistic planning also improves your company efficiency. On-site logistic planning makes it easy for you to store all the material properly. It also makes it easy for you to locate each other. It reduces the need of labor. Any excess material are needed to be handled by some of your employees who could be rather doing something else on the site. By using an efficient management software system to track and organize all materials on the site, you will only have to manage the right materials needed for the project. So it is in turn helps your employees to become more and productively focusing on their other tasks. It also nowadays, since environment is in, plays a very big role, it provides environmental benefits, like a growing number of businesses are now becoming fully conscious on the need to protect the environment. So therefore, we need to often looking to always to diminish the impact on the environment. By providing less waste due to excess materials, you can also help to reduce the waste sent to landfills. And when it also helps maintain order, logistic, uh, maintain order not only on the site, but also off site. An organized site can provide you workers with a much safer work environment. So with this, thank you very much, sir, in your insights. Surely your insights will help our students and for our research work. Thank for you. The and the question of our sessions will, will follow once our deliberations were completed from other panel members. So may I now request our next panel member. Yeah. Pramod, Sri Pramod Kumar sir, to please come up with their deliberation. Pramod Kumar is not there today. So we'll go with uh, Sri Niranjan Prabhu sir, followed by Raj Banerji sir. Niranjan Prabhu sir, head of operations at Gatti Intellect System. Sir, please come up with your deliberation. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you. First of all, I would uh, take this opportunity. Can you switch on your videos so that? If, okay. Thank you, sir. Please. I'm sorry, I think this with the. If you are comfortable, is it okay, sir? Or else I can continue. Please. Uh, good evening, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Professor uh, Bishwajit Patnaik, sir. Uh, Dr. Kalyan Shankar Rai, sir. Uh, Dr. Falgun Ranjana, madam. Uh, Conveners of uh, uh, this uh, symposium. Dr. Sunil Kumar ji, uh, Mr. Pratap Kumar Party ji, my uh, colleagues from the industry, students, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, uh, I thank uh, ASBM for giving me an opportunity to share uh, my views on the industry alongside my uh, industry colleagues. Um, 
let me start uh, because uh, my profile has already already been read but one thing uh, we missed in my profile was before uh, getting into the industry uh, i was also one of the assistant professors in manipal university so having taught for 6 years uh, one thing what excited me a lot was logistics because when uh, we read uh, when we go to the industry when we did the research one thing is very sure that it's going to be logistics is going to be the future of the industry and lot of innovations a uh, uh, lot of areas unexplored in the in, the, in this industry so um, uh, and what could be more uh, a game changer or what can be more uh, a prime factor for this is covid you know everyone uh, looked at covid you know everything stopped people are not able to come out of the house and um, because government was very clear that we don't want to risk lives but on the other side the trade and commerce should not stop so uh, in logistics that is especially when we talk about last mile delivery that is what is my sector i mean where that's where i come from my uh, group comes from that's avan group uh, we saw a, a huge opportunity which uh, we were able to Uh, capitalize and serve the economy uh, earn from the economy service uh, uh, bridge that uh, uh, what i would say a, a gap in the industry so um, i would like to take you through uh, some of the trends that have uh, made logistics or the future of the logistics more and more firm for our country if you look at the emerging markets in 20, after 2020 no doubt china is uh, still gaining but india is immediately its second is in second position and is gaining at a rapid speed at a rapid pace because if you look at the recent tensions uh, during the covid where us and china relations were at a, a were at a very disturbing and not only us and china but the entire world's relation with china were at a very disturbing phase there was a discussion that a lot of companies may start phasing out of china and what was the next market for those industries uh, to participate and run uh, their business houses so there in two countries uh, gained a lot of uh, momentum one was obviously uh, republic of india that is our country a second were second with the countries where there was a tie between indonesia mexico and brazil so why mexico and brazil why indonesia because if you look at uh, the connectivity all the three mo- the, the connectivity or the uh, landmass available for setting up industries the expansion the policies so uh, these countries i mean including us uh, are were offering and that is where uh, our prime minister uh, was also looking at make in india policy uh, inviting uh, uh, different cont- different uh, offshore industries to come and set up in our country why the connectivity factor with the world our relations with the world and most of all the intellect and the human resources which are available um, giving a thought to that what uh, makes us or what makes logistics a more unique um, uh, uh, what i would say a, a cake in the industry is it has uh, as i was saying earlier it has got a lot of opportunities i mean if you if you can talk about just startups the startups which are come in the industry we take about last mile deliveries now because the trend is now the customer is not going to the shop the customer wants all the products and services to come to his doorstep to come inside the living rooms to come inside that on their dining table so you talk about uh, companies which are offering these kind of services i uh, would like to name a few uh, geo mart which is starting now big basket grofers to take any company when for example uh, a products like chroma which tata is uh, uh, tata is one of the pioneers or uh, reliance so anything and everything which is movable which can be serviced is now been offered at the customers those step it's all either offered on his system or in his uh, dining table where whatever the customer needs now the movable products which you are talking about companies uh, 
who have seen uh, mobility uh, the small vehicle mobility i'm not talking about the big fleets the small vehicle mobility which can be a three wheeler or a four wheeler in that also there is a rapid uh, r and d which is happening on an electrical front so everyone is now talking about evs electric vehicles so um, in evs also uh, there are a lot of players who are now emerging into the market to and talk about even startups like etrio etios etio or um, uh, even mahindra is in the game now ti cycles is in their r and d about uh, launching evs so uh, startups which is not only uh, done by i mean by people who have cash but the people who have ideas also so um, <clears throat> the concept now is not only to do sales the concept is to deliver uh, efficiency and to also take customer satisfaction because you know customer loyalty is one of the major factors where the industry uh, where the government where the economy is concentrating you can talk of a uh, uh, hni customer or a middle income group customer anyone who is who has the capability to buy and experience the product for a fee uh, companies are looking at uh, having a a, a massive uh, sorry uh, having a massive uh, base of such customers then uh, there are other factors which are uh, also uh, um, emerging can you hear me yes, yes sir yes sir we hear you please proceed a lot of factors uh, which have changed uh, this uh, trend of last mile delivery is now uh, as a uh, uh, the earlier panelist was talking about uh, uh, a collaboration of technology with mobility that is smart uh, tracking nowadays uh, uh, that uh, concept has gone from a courier to a live delivery so if you for example if i take an example of a uh, entity called as dunzo so when i buy from the right from the time i order the product and i pay for the product i get an update of that particular uh, delivery pilot who is there on the road who is collecting my items and who is delivering so the tat the turnaround time or the delivery time so the customers have been given that experience of experience wherein they themselves can also interact with the pilot the ground pilot and they can get their items delivered at their convenience so the concept of last mile delivery restructuring of last mile delivery is also happening another uh, issue is uh, the concept related to contactless delivery and contactless payments so uh, after the note ban which happened on 500 and 1000 uh, digital uh, uh, payments were i would say or before covid the digital payment uh, spectrum was very limited to tier 1 and tier 2 cities but in lockdown i can say that uh, even the tier 3 tier 4 cities they are able to do uh, they are able to experience the digital payment at a much better Uh, experience and the government also had ramped up their infrastructure so that neither the industry nor the uh, breadwinner or nor the consumer suffers on account of non payment so a, a contactless platform wherein i was saying earlier you don't have to go to the uh, you don't have to go to the shopping mall you don't have to go to the cloth store anymore everything is available on the system i mean on the computer which you can just order by the click of the button and uh, entities like avan shakti uh, entities like uh, etrio or anyone who's there in the last mile delivery is offering the services on last mile delivery uh, will deliver that to the customers those step having said this there are certain pain points with the industry is also uh, uh, facing which can be an opportunity for academia uh, academics academic uh, academic institution like asbm or one of the or the any of the leading education industry ed- education uh, uh, you know cities or uh, colleges can actually take a, take this up as a challenge and try to uh, service the industry the pain point areas which we are looking at is the lack of knowledge and information among uh, uh, the resor- the workable resources see nowadays when i say because i find it very difficult to find and convince a person to become a delivery pilot 
I have to tell him that you have to be. I want a, a person who can drive a three wheeler or a four wheeler. So a three wheeler or a four wheeler person, people have made a conception that he should be a tenth pass or a twelfth pass person. So not many people graduates and post graduates is out of question nowadays. Even tenth or twelfth pass people are also not ready to take up that challenge. But here in the last month delivery, the concept is evolving because now our delivery associates or delivery pilots are also brand ambassadors of those companies. Are also the brand ambassadors of the products. So, how they become the brand ambassadors of the product? The passion or the knowledge which is being shared to them, which helps them to deliver the smiles across to the customer. So, uh, instead of you know picking from a lot and uh, you know just putting them onto the job, uh, industries are looking at a, a good platform or a good in, uh, or a good initiative. Uh, wherein academics can actually train, equip these uh, uh, like-minded people who can come and join the logistics industry, because logistics cannot be taught cannot be taught hundred percent in the classroom. You have to cast step into the field. You have to come to the warehouse. You have to experience the customer. You have to understand the client. You have to understand how the dynamics works, and then only you can come. Then only you can start establishing yourself in logistics. I did it in the hard way because I started from a professor who sits in a, a AC ch AC chamber and going for a conference. I had to literally take up the challenge, come down to Krishna Patnam Port, which is one of the leading private ports in the country, start there in container operations, and then uh, I can I was able to move out, uh, learn a lot of things, and I'm I would say I'm still learning. There there's so many things. So knowledge and information is very very much. Necessity, it's a, it's a, what I would say, it's a required, it's a protein capsule for for the young budding uh, uh, resources who want to enter into the logistics and basically who want to set their mark in logistics. Then there's a huge, uh, uh, I would say, and uh, not not huge, I would say there's a gap amongst the industry requirements and the classroom pedagogy. So. What uh, that gap? Out of that gap, two percent is filled by giving uh, summer internship projects or uh, internship projects. And usually, in internship projects, all of us, uh, very few companies do take a real interest in uh, training or giving the heads up to the student because they don't know whether the intern is going to be with them or not. And uh, moreover, <coughs> the time of Nine to ten hours is not enough in a day to experience for an intern to experience everything. So, ideally, what I am of a view is if it's a MBA two-year course or a BBM three-year course, one and half year should be in the classroom, and other one and half year the candidate has to compulsorily go to the industry, learn the trends, understand whether it is fit for him or her. If not, Come back to the classroom, re-equip re -equip yourself because you have good professors, you have good uh, think tank, you have a good knowledge tank. Re-equip yourself and again come back to the industry because logistics is one of the sectors where you cannot fail. You will have to evolve. Okay, and uh, I was also saying there's a huge myth about uh, last mile logistics. Um, a myth. Which says that last mile logistics, the ground team involved in last mile logistics, I was saying, uh, is usually filled with underqualified. But I would uh, like to uh, correct it by saying, no, anyone and everyone who has a capability to understand what logistics is all about can learn and can flourish in the industry. Giving this on a pain point, uh, on a uh, collaborative scale. There are a lot of schemes which is launched by the government to equip the equip the force. That is through DDUGKY, Din Dayal Upadhyaya, Gramin Kalyan Vikas Yojana, PMKVY. Then uh, there's another uh, industry acclaimed course called as Recognized Prior Learning (RPL), which is in Type One, Type Two, Type Three. These courses uh, or these initiatives, uh, industry is also taking. But my uh, request would be. Let academia also enter into this, because when there's a knowledge uh, bank of professors, 
is a knowledge bank of researchers budding researchers and acclaimed researchers they need to put a lot of uh, they need to give a lot of contribution in making uh, a country with a well equipped well skilled and well cultured course a well cultured force this is what will make india one of the going in going future or going in time to come it's going to make our country one of the most lucrative playgrounds for any business entity to come and set up their industries and flourish so i hope i'm not taken much of time uh, being a saturday so please excuse me if i have uh, no no sir <laughs> you're welcome my uh, again i would like to thank the entire management board of asbm uh, my students my student colleagues my industry colleagues for patiently listening to me thank you very much jai hind uh, thank you very much uh, niranjan prabhu sri niranjan prabhu ji Uh, for you are very much fortunate to have you because we have uh, examples from uh, uh, speakers who are in industries and coming to academia but we find here uh, uh, academic uh, an academician after having 6 years uh, working as an assistant professor went to uh, that to logistics sector so it is a great challenge for you and uh, these platforms of symposium are the platforms where we can understand the industry problem so that we can do research and students can have a live examples of the session and uh, i think your uh, deliberation really helped us in understanding the logistics and uh, everything is possible and uh, their research wing is there inside you so the your deliberations were really fruitful for us so um, you have narrated uh, that uh, how industry is heading towards the trends in logistics sector and how china is growing at a very faster rate but the difference between china and india though huge but uh, next to china we can say that uh, there is a great opportunity for india to emerge as a fastest economy and you have uh, uh, given uh, uh, information that uh, there are the countries which were next going to have big markets were india indonesia max mexico mexico brazil and uh, and you have given more importance on efficiency customer loyalty customer satisfaction customer delight and you have thrown more importance on collaboration of technology and the mobility of goods and when it comes to today the technological technological changes or the trends in the logistics sector recently yes we have seen um, most uh, or massive advancement for the logistic industry in the area of artificial intelligence augmented intelligence advanced uh, analyticals automation and but advancement in technology are not the only big challenges influencing the industry uh, from new shipping regulations to growing uh, global tensions and trade wars and predicted economic recession logistic companies will need to be alert and prepared for this uh, upcoming year for example carriers are already working ha- hard to meet the global 0.5 surplus cap which uh, goes into effect uh, from the last january and it will affect uh, more than 70000 ships according to imo estimates and uh, we all know the global trade wars between china and us have continually affecting logistic operations Uh, in 2018 traffic uh, uh, trade tariffs traffics affected 34 billion dollars worth of chinese products imported to us with china also taking costly countermeasures on us imports so the european economy has uh, have also been going on the downtrends as big sit concerns continue weighly heavily on european countries so there is uh, companies within the logistic and supply chain uh, spear must continue getting ready for all big challenges with innovations from uh, digital twins to blockchain to real time supply chain visibility these all playing a very big role and when over the past several years the logistic industry has started to integrate artificial intelligence solutions including intelligent uh, transportation route planning demand planning and their operations but this is only just the beginning for the last mile delivery robots and sustainable solutions warehouse automated picking systems predictive optimizing softwares 
so this will play really in academia we can say that there is a greater demand of artificial uh, and data sciences today uh, but uh, how it goes to the industry then we have to wait and see and when it comes to digital twins uh, are possible all on most of the existing logistic technological trends to keep an eye in this uh, era as many logistic professionals know products are never exactly the same as the computer models modeling is current state doesn't take into account how part wear outs are placed or replaced or how fatigue accumulates and uh, real time supply chain visibility is also playing and no no longer it is a great thing for logistic company after 2019 so it is necessary and need to take a step when it becomes a real time so real time data is now more in demand by consumers and carriers than ever which means logistic and supply chain can enterprises need to focus on implementing cutting edge scv solutions into their operations new supply chain utility visibilities and uh, when it comes to blockchain since 2018 has grown to become one of the biggest buzzwords in any industry as well as one of the most over hyped logistic technology trends the complicated concept of a blockchain can be difficult to grasp for the general public and despite its strong potential for incredible huge uh, cases both in outside of the logistic there has been overall lack of real development and this has led blockchain to become extremely over hyped and logistic professionals to feel fatigued from the term over huge data standards and uh, analyticals where uh, growing the big data analysis for logistic sector is also playing getting delivery system with the online businesses like amazon retail the complete delivery system or distribution system of logistic have changed there is a greater importance of the newcomers to the industry like uh, as niranjan had pointed out uh, the reliance geo but it is now the technology shaping the future of logistic and in the emerging models the new industry will play a very big role so with this thank you very much sir so i request all the participants to have questions so that we can ask in question our session now may i now plead our next panel member sri raj banerji sir to please give his deliberation sir please um it's trying to yeah am i audible Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think uh, firstly, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Bishwajit Patnaik, Dr. Kalyan Shankarre, Dr. Falgu Niranjana, Dr. Pratap, and Dr. Sunil Kumar for giving me this opportunity on a Saturday to come and interact with the students. And uh, my heartfelt gratitude to the panel members. I was listening to almost everyone, and loads of learning which is coming. Uh, well uh, i had almost an experience of uh, 22 years of retailing uh, which includes some bit of logistic marketing category and different uh, you know subject which is related to retail now currently almost one and a half year one year i am being serving reliance retail in east and geomart is a part of our kra geomart which is the new trend a uh, new venture as you see but it is a part of my kra and day in day out we are living with it but one thing one question before i go ahead uh, with the deliberation if i may i ask you that for try it out for at least uh, one day or half a day that leave your smartphone somewhere else switch it off and try to check your pulse rate switch off your one day or a half a day your smartphone keep it somewhere and then check your pulse rate i'm sure it will go up drastically because uh, without the smartphone without this device it is very difficult now to live a a better life because this is a part of our life uh, some people do keep the smartphone beside the bedside table some do keep it uh, you know just uh, while eating we are having dinner and somewhere the covid has also helped us to go closer to understand and realize 
that uh, smart, apart from the smartphone we need to also maintain relationship with our families so smartphone is important but family is also important and when while i'm doing this uh, you know uh, interaction with all of you the beauty of india uh, which may not happen uh, in western countries but the beauty of india on the background you may hear uh, the cooker whistle you may hear cooker whistle which is a part of our indian family but that's the beauty of india though there will be e-commerce there will be online shopping there will be technology there will be ai there will be many more things voice command but the essence of indian family the essence of indian way of living and shopping will thrive that our houses will have the whistle blower from the cookers will have the excitement and a fun and a joy to go to any retail shops and physically shopping out there uh, going the joy or having the happiness to have you know some snackies some ice cream some juices across in the malls those will come back it is just the covid period which has taken us a setback but once we are through and see how indians are now moving to different uh, holidays different places now beside the work from home it has started also a trend that work from mountains work from forest uh, work from sea seaside so people are taking up um, excuse or a different kind of a nature loving aspect to their working profile and they're taking going to mountains to work from there because it's all through team calls and google meets and different meetings or phone calls smart calls so all those are now much more in the life of us so that is uh, going to change yes uh, the uh, the tip of your finger at a one click many things are coming <clears throat> so if you want today at 2 o'clock something it is there and agar agar main baitha hua hu bhuvneshwar mein and i want bengali sweets from boloram or i want kesidas rasgulla at a one click next day or day after tomorrow within two days that bengal rasgulla will come to my doorstep that's the beauty or if i am a marwadi i am sitting at bengal i want a authentic rajasthani papad so that at a one click within 2 to 3 days of lead time it will reach my doorstep so the entire world has already come to our palm it is the fact that hamare hath mein abhi pura not only india in the entire world is there jio mart during this corona period has already penetrated very very high we have a huge in lakhs we have a database and customers who are actively participating in jio mart and we are serving them uh, within a very short span during covid what we realized is that grocery essential grocery has taken a different leap in the mind of the people because uh, grocery was a part of our life but during covid when the all modern trades like you know big bazaars or all these people when they opened their stores to serve their catchment and the society with all overcoming the fear of covid and our people our team our store managers or all our people who participated and ensured that we serve our society uh, during this covid situation that has made a many of the people in india realize that grocery retailing essential retailing grocery is so important for us okay sitting at home ordering through whatsapp that time when the covid was so peak so getting the orders at doorstep our boys traveling through different uh, you know riding devices going and delivering and then what it came is uh, our jio mart in life and jio mart ensured that we reach out to almost all pin codes in the city in the small town tier 2 tier 3 towns so that we can service our people and if you want something within the catalog you can order and we can service so we are also growing we are also learning and the more we graduate we will improve okay this is a new thing for us but we have the expertise we have the knowledge base and technology with us which will help us to take it forward uh i think tomorrow when we go forward next 5 years will be a very very crucial time for people in retail for the uh, omni channel and the e-commerce platform so now not only any ready to eat food 
or a grocery retailing or any damn thing fashion clothing general merchandise anything you want gifting is at a one click tomorrow it will be on a voice command regionally so in a tier 2 tier 3 towns or people who can who wants to do a voice command through the regional language in bengali gujarati uriya malayalam anything on a voice command they can order and the order will be denoted captured and it will be delivered to the customer so tomorrow the india story will be very very different on the online platform but same time the physical brick and mortar retail will remain will have the position right there there can be some shifting there can be time to time some shifting from people sitting at home ordering and also going out in the retail mall shops and also taking a trolley basket shopping it out uh picking items of their own choice from the larger assortment basket so physical retail or the brick and mortar retail will have this significance uh within this new change of technology new change of e-commerce new change of era of shopping physical retail will do have their presence and same time there will be huge huge opportunity uh will be collaborative manner which will happen lot of merger will happen as you know i don't want to spell out a lot of merging which is happening so india will see a significant uh, paradigm shift i would say by next 2 3 to 5 years a complete different so people still who travels to western countries and comes back and says ke oh my god i see uh, so much of lovely coffees and i see so much of uh, online happening out there it will not happen it will also happen in india we are ready even with our last mile delivery we are ready yes there are certain training aspect there are certain installation of you know uh, education of people which needs to happen that i would request uh, you know institutes like asbm to also take up last mile delivery logistics online retail uh, shopping and online retail handling of that you know how to handle a dark room how to handle a fulfillment center how to handle um, small aspect area from where the picking can happen so all these things aspect can be one subject also within the retail uh, in, in the in the in the institutes for the next uh, students to get groomed for this so huge opportunity guys stay tuned many more things will be coming up i am experiencing i was hardcore uh, you know brick and mortar retailer i have never learned uh, you know online retailing and i was a firm believer that for me it is hardcore physical retailing brick and mortar retailing and almost 22 years i have been doing that but now when i am learning day in day out with my team and really learning the every aspect and experiencing myself making mistakes and correcting it i am learning the way it is that how the online retailing should be done how the customers are so demanding customers sitting at home can click at one thing and say i want the delivery within one day within within 5 6 hours vegetables vegetables ordering and getting it after 48 hours it not desirable but vegetables ordering just giving and then asking it for within 2 3 hours or 4 hours with the vicinity of the catchment is desirable and we are trying to get that space there so that we can deliver uh, the desirable products essential products based on the shelf life and necessity in the kitchen we should be there we should be reshouldering the kitchen of the women's today and we should also help them to ease out that if today my kid want my child wants something to be uh, you know prepared at house and i don't have those ingredients i won't annoy my child i will say okay, okay my boy within 2 3 hours i'll give you i'm getting the ingredients one click from the smartphone either you ordered a ready made food that you get from swiggies and zomatos of the world or you want to prepare yourself get it from you know grofers big baskets and geo marts and amazon uh, grocery anywhere you get it and you cook it and serve it so that's the beauty and the happiness which is going to be there which is already happening there are lot of changes already started happening but many more people are going to get into this we can see a significant shift also within the physical retail to online retail the customers who are shopping with us physically also shifting a significant uh, set of customers is shifting to online 
okay there will be senior citizens uh, there will be people who are unwell those easy to click and order for self those will be there so i think uh, this will be the changes and a new india will emerge it is already emerging and small towns type two type three towns where we feel the smartphone penetration is also going very very high so more and more smartphone penetration will go up okay the online shopping the desire the fulfilling the desires the happiness to click an order get things on the doorstep will significantly take a spike and there will be a change thank you so much thank you very much sir you are indeed a, a prolific speaker for us and you have a long association with us from the last to from 2016 a long 14 years association with us uh, whenever it comes to a marketing symposium or marketing conference you are always aligned towards thank you very, very much for your cooperation and uh, when it comes to de deliberation you have beautifully started with uh, mobile phone and we guess uh, how mobile uh, smartphones uh, is playing a very big role today you started with the phrase that switch off your mobiles and check the pulse rate but we all accept that it is true in each and every corner of the uh, india um, mostly after post pandemic you are so dependent now we have the conference or the education process also we have started with online business or with the dependence upon the uh, online or internet so you have thrown that how mobile phone or smartphones can have an impact on not only marketing but also logistic transport and supply chain mobile technologies are having a great impact in supply chain of goods because of the environment in which we work a good deal of logistics and transportation personnel are using multi purpose commercial grade mobile devices because they allow more efficient management of the supply chain while allowing managers to work from wherever they are located mostly the technologies were built in cameras or handheld computers tablets barcode label printers scanners rfid tags gps near field communication voice recognition software or shared logistic networks so all these technologies are both uh, mobile and wireless allowing maximum flexibility not only in marketing retailing and uh, in uh, every sector of the aspect so today logistic and supply chain management are playing key benefit role in terms of mobile technology logistic management and supply chain often involve more mobile resources than they than the other business functions while needing to integrate with a wide range of other workforce and business processes the combination of technical advancement price point reductions and solution integrations set the stage for widespread adoption of mobile technologies across industries and company sizes with project that delivery values in weeks not months and years the capability of today's smartphones and mobile data networks have expanded well beyond the rudimentary mobile tracking solutions that have been used to manage resources on the road in the past at the same time the cost of mobile technology has dropped drastically while the functionality of mobile devices ranging from smartphones and iPhones to tablets and GPS devices have expanded mobile data coverage has increased as network providers have invested substantially in the 4G and now we see what will give the 5G element with the nowadays we find uh, the telecommunication market is uh, slightly converting to a oligopoly market where many players at time were competing in the market but today we find hardly reliance jio bsnl and airtel and uh, many small and in when it comes to online business also amazon and flipkart were somewhat trying to be become as a oligopoly market rather than previously a monopolistic market and um, as uh, raj banerji sir has uh, rightly postulated the channel retailing and how it uh, is playing a big role from physical to online mode so as he is telling his whole experience of 22 years where with a physical but, but now post pandemic there is a need of uh, online devices or with the internet users or dependence upon the online is we are we all are learning and these are the problems that we keep to our students and do research and we can prepare 
and uh, Raj Banerjee sir have also suggested some courses. Uh, already we can say that we are the pioneers in uh, retailing um, management in Odisha. And we, if you go to any retailing industry, you can find uh, the alumni of ASBM University. But now with the change in online picking, online retailing, we need to think of a separate course or some segment of the retailing. And it really it will help you to boost. Thank you, sir, for your suggestion that uh, we will uh, uh, suggest in our uh, academia so that it will go. So these are the platforms where we know the pitfalls or where we know the new trends that is coming and what is the need of the industry. And e-commerce are now going to be omnichannel as suggested by you and stores are the new black. Pure players uh, to go omnichannel if they want to grow in future according to the trends in e-commerce. Today, there has been many ways of reaching to the customer, such as physical stores, online stores, mobile apps, social media, telemarketing. And in line with the digital revolution, consumers have become accounts mostly related to shop across the different channels. So therefore, consumers expect omni-channel today. And the retailers who have transferred themselves to omni-channel can grow more than pure online shops the so-called pure players. Therefore, pure players have to think in terms of physical channels in addition to online, or else the market can driven, or there is a greater challenge for this kind of industry. So thank you very much, uh, uh, sir, for your deliberation. Now uh, I request all of our uh, panel members to please switch on their videos so that we can have a snapshot uh, of this and uh, though we will look forward for uh, the question our sessions thank you sir uh, parito sir uh, sundar sir arvin sundar sir yes thank you very much all uh, um, i request pati sir also to please switch off their videos so that rajvin thank you sir sir now we move uh, move into the question our sessions um, students uh, have addressed so many questions so i will go one by one with this so my first question uh, i would like to request raj banerji sir to address this question the question is sir does customer knowledge have any role in the changing online marketing today Does customer knowledge regarding the products or the services, does it have any role in the changing online marketing today? Definitely, definitely, yes. <clears throat> uh, it holds uh, one of the key pillars of importance because without the customer knowledge, with the changing environment, how things are you know changing so fast, uh, it the, the any no retailer or no businessman can sustain uh, the business. So it's very important to have the customer knowledge that what consumption. So when it comes to customer knowledge, there will be knowledge based on their consumption trend. There will be knowledge based on their service level, change what they look for. And there will be uh, the frequency of customer or what frequency they want. So there are multiple buckets of the knowledge of customer, which the any business people or any entity will have to understand. And today in a current scenario, the AI, which is artificial intelligence, it helps us to understand our customer cycle much better, much better. Because it also captures that. So like example, uh, when we were studying in uh, the X organization, which is feature group, we were studying a customer life cycle. Then it came out that a customer who is actually shopping a diaper, okay, and also parallelly shopping a soda, which means that there is a need to also give snackies. So we can just informing that we do have snacks also with us, okay, and we also do have other products in adjacency to the diaper you're buying for your three-year-old child or two-year-old child. We have many more other products where you can choose from, and when we are studying the cycle through the AI. The customers consuming soda on a high frequency means there is a need of also telling him that you need some other products to also eat to 
they stay healthy so example customer artificial intelligence tell us, tells us that this customer buying certain product which we can have a correlation and tell the online platform to push a message hey you are buying already these products and next time when you order you have this multiple choice it comes up it comes up when we order from amazon now or from jiomart when you are ordering some you know noodles it comes up that we have some ketchups for you we have this chinese cuisine sauces for you so those are the knowledge on consumption trend change pattern it will come up now today when in during covid scenario we have seen the consumption of snackies ready to eat food and also the products like rajma like soya chunk and i will be specific biscuits uh, ice creams okay then indian sweets okay those uh, teen rasgullas and teen gulab jamuns of the world those things the sale has significantly gone up the world of sanitizers sanitizers the hand washes is definitely gone up that because of the covid scenario okay which has taught us is a fear factor for which the people are buying more and more sanitizers more and more hand washes that's there as a pre covid measures but when it comes to processed food when it comes to staples definitely there is a significant jump of specific products which were not going so high so over the last year if i say biscuit has taken a leap of 140% in retail so 140% jump so that this spike rask which was there it has gone up the tea coffee so this consumption sitting at home if i i was consuming two times a day or one time a day in the morning when i'm at home and i'm doing all these team calls and all those con calls of the world i am snacking and munching much more than compared to where i was in office and it was not doing it so that has changed definitely it's going to be of very very importance thank you thank you sir thank you very much uh, i once again request all panel members to switch on their uh, videos during question hour session so that uh, the participants can see it sir please paritosh sir and arvin sir sir please uh, uh, my next question sir uh, uh, is uh, how the drones uh, are uh, playing a big role in the delivery of small packages in metros sir uh, this question can be addressed by arvin sundar sir uh, sir how drones uh, can be useful in metros for delivery of small packages in logistics or transportation sir please uh, unmute yourself sir sorry about that thank you, uh, thank you sir uh, i end up doing that very often uh, i i think uh, as we are seeing a lot of experiment is on in the space of uh, using drones to deliver uh, packages much more faster than what we are currently doing as uh, uh, you know uh, niranjan sir was mentioning uh, one of the uh, uh, companies dunzo has already been uh, 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 implementing a lot of uh, delivery uh, at the micro level which uh, can be uh, um, uh, you know uh, improved while we are looking at doing in the space of uh, uh, courier delivery uh, using uh, uh, drones uh, a lot of uh, implementation has happened in the space of uh, delivering pharmaceutical products uh, abroad <clears throat> when we say pharmaceutical you have your medicines uh, being delivered uh, it's, it's still at a much nascent space phase in india but uh, that is one opportunity that can uh, happen in in the e-commerce as uh, e-commerce evolves in india thank you sir thank you very much um but uh, the next question uh, i would like to request uh, niranjan prabhu sir to address the question is sir um, how the china russia latvia silk route will affect the global marketing or logistic industry the new silk route between china russia and latvia will affect the global logistic industry
sir please unmute yourself sir it's not okay happens a lot thank you sir uh, i would uh, excuse from this question because uh, what the prime uh, concentration which we are right now is on the domestic uh, market yes and uh, i would request any of the other panelists uh, to answer this question because my knowledge or uh, right now i'll reserve uh, my thoughts on okay. this as there is a I mean, international implications are there in the roads so that's yes, it so uh, i would uh, request raj benerjee sir to address because he is a senior member and he has explored uh, more of it so how the silk route of china will have an impact on our industry so we all know that we have an uh, we have now some somewhat war like uh, situations with china relations also because of uh, the road communications or logistics so how would it impact us or how it will impact our industry very smartly i would also not like to answer this yeah okay. <laughs> Uh, the other gentleman was smart. Other gentleman was smart enough to, you know, restrict and reserve from commenting this, yes. because you want to things get, you know, also recorded and some communication goes wrong from our mouth. Okay. It different implications. Yes. We one of the are representative of some companies, so yes. I would yes. reserve, reserve my, you know, comments from this question. Thank so you. I, my my students were asking the good question, but uh, as this platform is from companies. so it is okay sir for all of you but the, i i hope the question is a right question he is asking yeah yeah Do admire we... admire appreciate the question appreciate the question okay sir okay so the next question uh, where with regards to what are the challenges with uh, inventory management in uh, reverse logistics he is asking we are now very much talking about reverse logistic and what challenges we can we face now in this uh, national point of view or with our current market conditions nirjan prabhu sir can you address this question um yeah i would definitely uh, uh, try to uh, reiterate what i had uh, said earlier uh, the prime focus on any of this sectorial skills or um, Uh, i would look at um, you know particular domain your skilling is skill set uh, the person coming with that particular skill set information education is very important and uh, that's the reason why uh, i was again again and again uh, re emphasizing that the time taken to train and the technology integration is a key challenge for any company because if you want a fully acclimatized professional then there's a huge cost and if you want to uh, train and implement then there is a lot of opportunity cost so uh, yes challenges are there because and uh, at this point of time we would like i would like to tell that we're still in phase 1 or phase 2 and there's a lot of uh, ground left to cover uh, for industries uh, for individuals to understand see nowadays if you look at post covid there are a lot of people applying for uh, opportunities in a cross domain so if for example if i am a chartered accountant and if accounting is my uh, area of expertise i am also looking at wherever the opportunities are because right now i want to sustain in this the same thing is happening with logistics also because i am getting a person who has worked in a bank who wants to come and manage my warehouse i have i have come across a person who has worked as a mechanical engineer who wants to come and manage my uh, customers uh, uh, stores so there is a lot of issues so uh, if there is no doubt that uh, manpower uh, uh, is a issue manpower is a cons manpower constraints are there but uh, in in order to equip them skilling upskilling and uh, reacclimatizing in this particular domain of reverse logistics inventory management warehouse management or even in case of last mile delivery mid mile delivery 3pl is important so i would relook at uh, i would reiterate i'm sorry i would uh, reform the statement saying that skilling 
unless and until a course killing is not done either at a school level or a college level uh, the challenges in logistics the opportunities in logistics will continue thank you thank you very much sir just i want to add sir parito sir yes sir please that uh, basically in reverse logistics this goods always move from the end consumer back to the seller or the manufacturer okay sir the most common example for the reverse reverse logistics uh, is when a consumer returns a purchased uh, item or a for a refund uh, the return products may be resold or disposed of permanently but uh, in recent years for we seen this reverse uh, logistics has become a component of a successful streamlined supply chain and in a warehouse environment and then uh, reverse uh, logistics pertain to any of the following uh, any of the activities like uh, after the initial purchase like returns remanufacturing refurbishing and unsold goods the end of life delivery failure like we can say equipment repairs and maintenance like that reverse logistics is not without challenges always uh, uh, we should know that one of the most common is tracking of the profitability of the reverse logistics process that depending upon the items it is not a profitable uh, to ship products back to distribution center because the value uh, of the product may be less than the cost of shipping this is my view yes sir yes sir thank you thank you sir uh, another question to nirajan prabhu sir only sir so as you are from academia and uh, to industry and from industry to academia so our students if uh, uh, our students of operations and logistic management would like to pursue a career in the industry can you tell uh, key skills that is really challenging uh, that you are not uh, you are expecting that in the industry but we are not able to deliver it can you name some five skills that, that is highly essential from our students if i have to rephrase i mean as far as i understood the question if they want to enter into the industry what are the five skill set they need to carry is what you are asking professor exactly exactly okay uh, see if it is logistics as i was telling earlier you need to step into the field first and if i i also go with the thought uh, with uh, mr banerji shared that now we need to understand the psychology of the customer so the first skill set with the candidate or the student needs to carry is willingness to document everything that happens as an experience and go back and understand why i am able to get this customer and why i failed to get this customer because that we do on a regular basis documentation so that capability to document that is where your soft skills come into picture soft skills see nowadays if you ask uh, anyone like i do it in the interview uh, to the candidates i ask them how good are you in computer he says i'm i can i'm wonderful the next question comes how proficient are you in excel that is where the confidence of the candidate goes for a toss because he says i'm able to open excel i'm able to do math i'm able to do basic mathematical calculation draw a table design a graph that's it okay uh creating excel is wonderful if you are able to understand excel but why excel is required because you need to look at numbers a lot you need to take decisions you need to update people that what is your thought process on that and management students where i failed i would say that to cut the long story short i was not able to tell yes or no and that is what is the issue which is happening right now even with the interns also so to understand soft skills you need to sit you need to understand the software which are which that basic software is ms office software and how you are going to use ms office software to create documentation is the second thing third thing is you need to understand that you are when you step into the field everyone whom you meet if it's a truck driver if it's a, 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 a land transport manager it, if it's a supervisor everyone is your teacher right from the watchman also yes i think uh, yes sir thank you thank you very much though can i can now, i add something can yes, i sir. can i is it allowed 
yes sir please yes, sir. I, i do very well very well uh, narrated uh, i would like to add that just knowing excel is also not important for a management student we would expect that a data inference how to get a data inference done yes how to bring out the core what data is saying see those days have gone those days have gone jaha hum bolte the ke dedicated employee passionate employee okay bahut 24 ghanta kaam karta hai bahut acha kaam karta hai those days are gone now we want smart people who can channelize their leadership through their team and only data led work mane whether it's a marketing job data led whether it's a inventory led also job data led everything data led and a detailed study that is very very important these days because without data tells you everything if one management student or any a manager cannot read a data properly and with the help of data he cannot work then it will not be a right fitment in the profile he is going for but just to just to add exactly exactly sir so now the data interpretation and uh, data forecasting data analysis are very much essential we also included uh, data analytics and uh, big data analysis softwares in our course curriculum because now everything is data consumer mind is with the uh, big data analysis but as we told uh, management has so much of subjects needs to cover so one need to you see as i told that is the reason i have asked what we can only concentrate on the skills rather than the whole subject because it is so broad dimension management so that's why we go on sir discussion. i am sorry to interrupt i yes. just want to add one more thing in logistics there is no ego you okay <laughs> that is that is the human you cannot part. carry the brand of iim manipal asbm iit anywhere because i said every for ego there is there is no room in the logistics industry Obviously. so management students as as fast as they understand this they will thrive in the industry yes sir go exactly to a, yes. go to a customer who is very angry at you who will give you the right feedback about you your company what is happening wrong so that you are able to come back strong yes. don't go to a customer who is really very happy because he can mislead sometimes sometimes he can mislead your company also. obviously yes. right can we, can we add a can we yes, add a sir. subject in the curriculum can we add a subject of relationship management because business is all about relationship maintaining building creating relationship and consistency of maintaining relationship can we add a curriculum of relationship management and yes, i know sir, in india only one person can do that who is dr vishwajit patnaik yes sir. only one person in india who can do that he can be out of the box can create a subject which is called relationship management yes, no other can yes true yes sir. true so right now in our marketing curriculum already we have customer relationship management but uh, the relationship management today we have a, a broad area so we have to still segment it because as per the need and uh, i propose it sir uh, to our uh, university that we need to include because this is the platform where we take suggestions see and the problems with, the, with, with the due respect to uh, mr philip kotler yes indian industry is very different indian customer is very different from a american customer from a european american. customer so yes. as rightly suggested by uh, shri banerji i would reiterate that you need to create a subject plus the most important thing is you need to push your students on to the street into the field to the customer yes. to the companies and let the companies i would not say exploit them but i would say put them to the realistic scenario and tell them that this boss this is how the industry is and you need to understand yeah. and you need to you need to survive in this yes sir thank you thank you sir. i i think i would like to just add one last point to that i think we uh, both uh, mr niranjan and mr raj banerji have articulated extremely well we in marketing call it more of human to human interaction now because it's all about how one human communicates to the other human and i think as mr nirajan said there is no no space for ego anymore in any industry as such uh, i uh, i completely agree logistics has a lot more impact on that but uh, it it's all about how well uh, uh, we communicate uh, 
make the communication a human to human interface than uh, business to business now exactly sir exactly True. So one last question, sir, to Paritosh, sir, uh, Paritosh Mandal, sir. Sir, uh, with the change of uh, internet commerce today, does it has any impact on the distribution of products and services? To make it easier, how changing in internet commerce have impact on distribution of products and services? You can share your own experience in Tata projects. network is there okay okay no no problem no. okay sir because uh, this demands in uh, e-commerce sector is always ever changing sir okay that uh, it is important that uh, uh, you increase your supply chain visibility at every corner through internet uh, through internet or any e-commerce platform that means whatever uh, tools you are util uh, tools to utilizing uh, for tracking the products tracking the orders and tracking the shipments in order to get a uh, to get a better idea for what might be hotting okay in changing an environment already i clearly said in my discussion that logistics planning always minimizes the risk by uh, companies to anticipate the change by developing strategies and uh, through your uh, this any kind of tools sir not added to those some supply chain are always a set of plugs and so many companies develop their logistics strategies for specific product line that uh, geography uh, regions or customer segment and enabling them to adapt to market uh, changes impacting one region or business line while maintaining efficiency across other then uh, that uh, maintain and expand uh, your um, uh, that uh, what do you sir just recall uh, what is the exact question sir that how e-commerce uh, is helping for the distribution of uh, logistic sector Oh, definitely sir it is uh, helping the logistics sector for e-commerce because already uh, you know the demand in the e-commerce sector is very ever changing and uh, always it is important to uh, that uh, increase our supply chain visibility at every corner thank you thank you sir okay, thank so you. now may i now request uh, uh, my co-coordinator co of this uh, event mark logistic to cast vote of thanks sir please Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on National Mark Logistics Symposium 2021. I, on behalf of ASBM University, extend heartily thanks to the panel members, Mr. Raj Anarji, Business Head, East Reliance Retail, Mr. Paritos Mandal, Supply Chain Manager, Tata Projects. Thank you, sir. I also convey our gratitude to the guests, Mr. J. Arvind Sundar, Director, Nine Things, Bengaluru, and Mr. Niranjan Prabhu, Head of Operations at Bhakti Intellect Systems. I convey my thanks to the moderator, Dr. Sunil Kumar Das Bendi, for efficiently initiating the discussion and paving the way for effectively conduct of the session. I also extend my sincere thanks to the President ASBM University Professor Dr. Prasajit Patnaik and Vice Chancellor of ASBM University Professor Dr. Kalyan Sankar Rai, Pro Vice Chancellor Professor Dr. Falguni Ranjana, faculty members, IT support staff, and all the students for their enormous cooperation in organizing this symposium. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Thank you very much, sir, for coming and giving so much suggestions and uh, so much. We surely will take this into our research and for further. Hope you will uh, uh, again participate in such further events. I thank you all, sir. Thank you, all the participants. For thank coming. you. It's been an honor to be here. Thank you, Paritos, sir, Nirajan, sir, Arvind, sir, Pas, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's been an honor to be here. Thank you.